Good morning. Brothers and sisters, I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is going to be a beautiful day when you realize that it is a gift given to you by God and that you will decide to live for His glory and honor. And therefore, before we begin our routine, uh, uh, routine life, let us uh, be quiet and silently listen to the voice of God. As we meditate on this particular verse again, as we read yesterday, Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. And I'm sure you remember what the message was yesterday. There is one particular phrase repeated three times in these four verses. In the Lord. And so the Apostle Paul gave three commandments for us to obey in the Lord. And we shall continue the same subject we talked about yesterday. Paul gave three commandments for the believers to obey in the Lord. Yesterday we considered the first and the half of the second. We saw what it means to stand fast in the Lord. That is the first, to stand fast in the Lord. And uh, the second is, agree in the Lord. It is concerning about, about the two quarreling sisters uh, in, in the church at Philippi. And uh, quarreling can cause divisions and bitterness and disliking others, etc. Uh, the devil uses the evil spirit of gossip to create such a situation. And today we will talk about an effective way to deal with gossipers first before we consider the third one. Suppose someone comes to you and starts talking or gossiping uh, you about someone else a third person, filling your mind and your, 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 your heart and your ears with uh, poison. And tell that person, if you want to deal with effectively and solve this problem, tell that person who is gossiping you to you about a third person, um, brother, or if she is a, is, is a sister, then it says it's a brother or sister. I think there is a misunderstanding. And um, I am willing to help. Why don't both of us go to that person, that brother, that sister, and clear it? You know, a well-meaning person will readily agree to this proposal. Come on, let's go and finish it off, clear it off forever. But if that person's intentions are evil and uh, not good, but is it is or her intention is to create problem and confusion, he or she will reply to you something like this. Oh, well, leave it. Forget about it. And if he or she is a peacemaker, he will come with you and clear things with the other person. But if that person's intentions, by, uh, intentions uh, uh, of gossip is uh, creating problem and troubles, that person will reply you the same way. No, let us forget. I don't want. And uh, always, therefore, you can make out easily, you can judge easily the intentions of uh, that gossiper by his uh, response or her response to your good proposal, where, where you yourself are trying to help. And therefore, that's why we need to use our wisdom and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you 
and help you to understand the best way to deal with these gossipers. And may the Lord grant you success in the days to come as you deal with gossipers. And that is my prayer for you. So perhaps the Holy Spirit wants you to be a peacemaker and to be a peacemaker. So the third in the Lord. Apostle Paul says, the first was stand fast in the Lord. Second was rejoice in the Lord. And the third one is, no, no, no. The second one was agree in the Lord. And the third one is rejoice in the Lord. One thing all of us need to know about joy is this joy has nothing to do with material things or your circumstance. These things have nothing in them to give us joy. This is the simple fact of life. A man living in luxury can be wretched and miserable. But at the same time, a man living in poverty can be uh, uh, happy and overflow with joy. He will have peaceful sleep and no problem. So happiness depends not on things or places. Happiness depends on the person himself. I will tell you a story of two teenage brothers. One was older, one was younger. The uh, sons of uh, the same parents. And the older brother was a pessimist. You know who a pessimist is. Nothing can make him happy. Uh, nothing can make him joyful. And he is always gloomy. And uh, any good thing you do to him, you give him a gift, uh, you know, he will, he will look at the negative points of anything and everything. And so he doesn't see anything uh, that makes him happy. But uh, the other fellow was an uh, optimist. An optimist is someone who sees good things in everything. Something that will cause him rejoice and jump up and down. You know, uh, that may be a, the worst kind of situation, but he will somehow, s he will find out the reason for him to rejoice. So his parents were, their parents were very much concerned about these two characteristics of these two sons. You know, that, that fellow who is the optimist, he rejoices no matter what you do, what you give, it may be the worst kind of things you give as a gift, he will find something in it to rejoice. So he is happy. And so uh, these parents became very much concerned about uh, both of them. So how to uh, help them to, 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 to have some kind of changes. So they decided that they, they, they had the same birthday date, though the years were different. And so they decided, parents decided, they will, will give uh, a, a beautiful, something very expensive for the, uh, for the, uh, for, for the uh, pessimist son, the older son. And something so bad, that fellow will throw it around and uh, shout uh, at his parents. And that's what they did. So they bought a beautiful cycle, expensive one, colorful, with all kinds of gadgets in it, and everything so wonderful, and packed it very nicely and uh, for the older son. Whom? For the pessimist. And they, you know, for the optimist uh, son, the second son, the, what gift they packed? They had a cardboard box filled with uh, horse dung and packed it very nicely and uh, kept. So, in the night while they were asleep, parents uh, took these beautiful packets and uh, kept it uh, in each one of their rooms at a spot to where they could see easily as they opened their eyes in the morning. And that's what happened. So, the first one 
opened his eyes and he saw this beautiful packet. Happy birthday written. He opened it, saw this beautiful cycle, colorful, so wonderful. And instead of rejoicing and going and hugging the parents, and thinking, he started grumbling and finding out all the wrong things why he should not have it. So the parents decided to go and see how these two sons were reacting. And they saw this older son sitting there and grumbling and murmuring and complaining and cursing and all these sort of things. As soon as they, he saw the parents, they, he started shouting, What have you done? What did you give me? What am I going to do with this cycle? Do you want me to ride this cycle on the road and a bus run over me? Both the cycles are gone. I will be gone. That's what you do want to do with me. And he complained and they, were, they did not know what to do. And so they went to the second uh, boy, the optimist. You know what they saw? This fellow was jumping up and down on his bed and all over the room, running around, rejoicing. As soon as he saw his parents, he went and hugged them and said, Thank you for the gift, marvelous gift. And they, <laughs> they were wondering, what happened to you? Well, so what about the gift? You know, mom and dad, this is the best gift. You know what this gift means? This means there is a horse somewhere around this place. And I am going to find that horse. You see, happiness does not depend on things or places. Happiness depends on the person. And my brothers and sisters, if we are with the right person, nothing else matters. If on the other hand, if we are with the wrong persons, nothing can make us happy. But consider this. We have the best person to be our friend around whom we can be. And it is always good for us to be around a person who can lead us always into happiness and into joy. What did Jesus do for you and for me? You know, he laid down his life for you. Can you find a better friend? No matter how close that friend may be, will he be willing to die in your place, instead of your death? No. But here is Jesus, seeing you being dragged by the devil into eternal hell, that you may suffer eternal death and separation from God eternally. He came and he took your place of a punishment and the condemnation of God, and he died for you shed his blood. And you know, as I mentioned yesterday, the blood of Jesus Christ is the greatest thing that the, the devil fear. And so, you must be choosy about choosing your friends. It depends on around whom you are. And uh, the Bible says, why Solomon said, a bad company corrupts a clean mind. And we know it is true. We run a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. Young men, handsome Young men, completely ruined their whole life and their future. Some of them are from very rich families. They had everything that they needed. And then we ask these uh, young people, how did you get into this mess? We always receive the same answer. 
You know what it is? Friends. Bad company. And so if young people are listening to me, children, you listen to this. If you want to enjoy a very rich life, filled with joy and happiness of the Lord, so that you can, you can, you can experience and you can practice this third commandment, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Make certain that you choose the right company to be around. With a good character who will mean the best for you. And, 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 and Solomon said, it, it, is, it is good for a wise man to use a stick and a beater. It, is a, it, it will be more than any amount of money that he could give. A friend, a true friend will rebuke you. A true friend will correct you. A true friend will not say, Are, whatever you are doing, it is it's okay. No. Whatever a young life does is not okay. Always make sure that you follow the right people and be around the right people, godly people who knows Jesus, who is on their way to eternal life. And I pray that this shall be a good lesson for you. God loves you. And in his love, he gave himself totally for your sake. Because your eternity is so great. And your soul is so valuable. Don't let your soul be lost. God bless you as you make your right choices. The Holy Spirit is always there to help you. And I love you. And God loves you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you to make the right choices, find the right friends, and be with them. Be with godly people who may correct you, rebuke you, but who will love you and guide you properly. And your godly parents, if you have, praise God. Listen to them. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day the Lord has given you. A wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of this day. Amen.